Hey, Jim Wolf here with dating advice for men who love women. So there's a girl that you want to meet or you have a date coming up and you don't want your nerves to get in the way. You don't want that to stop you from having the success with women that you deserve. So what are some things that you can do to deal with that? Well, in this presentation, I'm going to share seven things with you that will help you deal with your nervousness or your social anxiety. And before we get started, if you have anxiety that comes from some kind of deep trauma, I encourage you to get professional help for that. However, if you just get a little nervous and you don't want it to stop you from having the success that you deserve, that's what today's presentation is about. So let's get started with the powerful reframe before we get into the seven specific tips. And that's just that your nervousness is actually a good thing. It tells you that you're doing something that you find important. So if you don't feel nervous, maybe you're not actually interested. So you feeling a little nervous or a little anxious just means that you're actually interested in this person and that you should pursue it. A lot of times our fears tell us exactly what we should do. So that can be a little counterintuitive because normally fear tells us what we shouldn't do. It tries to keep us safe. However, a lot of times it tells us exactly what we should do because pushing through that fear represents an opportunity for growth, an opportunity to get more in your life, an opportunity for more abundance. And so one key skill that we can develop as men is courage. And courage is not the absence of feeling nervous or afraid. It's being able to feel that and still take action anyway. So a courageous guy is not a guy who's calm and collected all the time and never feels nervous or anxious or worried or fearful. A courageous guy can feel those things and still take action. And that's what we want. And it's completely normal that you feel nervous. Going on a first date can be a little awkward for both people. She's probably going to be nervous too. It's completely normal. And almost all of us have a built-in fear of meeting strangers. So that's usually going to raise the tension in your body. And most people feel nervous about that. So just remember that if you feel nervous, it's actually a good thing. It means it's something that you should pursue. And it's completely normal. It's something that we all feel in this situation. It's all about how you deal with it. And so now let's jump into seven ways that you can manage your anxiety or your nervousness so that you can have the success that you deserve. And number one is stop trying to get something from her. The main thing that causes social anxiety, including dating anxiety, is trying to get something from someone else. So I want you to imagine two scenarios. One is you're walking down the street and you see a beggar. And even though you're a good person and you care about people and you want to help them, you see a beggar and the beggar wants you to give them money. How do you feel inside yourself in that situation? Feels a little awkward, right? No matter how nice you are, whether you give them money or not, it feels a little weird to you because you know that person wants something from you. Okay, and now I want you to imagine a second scenario. You are at a sporting event, you're having a good time, and all of a sudden a Red Bull truck pulls up. And a really cute girl and a cool guy get out of the Red Bull truck and they come towards you with a free Red Bull. Now, even if you don't like Red Bull, how do you feel in that situation? It's a lot different than when you pass the beggar on the street, right? Well, why is that? It's because the Red Bull people are wanting to give you something freely. They don't expect anything in return. Their entire marketing strategy is just to hand people free Red Bulls who might use it. And if they like it, maybe they'll buy more later at the store. So they're giving that to you freely. So when you are giving something freely, you don't feel anxious. Because even if the other person doesn't want it, it doesn't matter. You're giving it freely. So giving of yourself freely is the key to getting rid of your dating anxiety. Live a life that you enjoy, regardless of whether a woman is in it or not. The more things that you do that you legitimately enjoy on your own, and the more things that you cut that you don't enjoy, the happier you're going to be on your own, and then you're going to show up on a date with a full cup, or you're going to meet that woman with a full cup, and now you don't need something from her, and so you can relax, and she's going to pick up on that, interpret it as confidence and now you're going to have a much better chance with her because the less you're trying to get something the more likely it is that you'll get it 
So switch your mindset from trying to get something from her to attracting her. And you can only do that if you create a life and a reality that you love and then invite her to join you in that instead of trying to get her to make you complete. You are whole, complete, and awesome, all on your own, exactly as you are right now. And when you come to a date or you meet a woman with that mentality, you're going to do a lot better. So I encourage you to get rid of any outcomes that you're thinking of before you meet her or before you go on your date with her. And just focus on being present in the moment, getting to know her, and having as much fun as you possibly can. And I'll tell you what, as soon as you get rid of any of those outcomes in your mind, you're going to get a lot more of them. So the first thing is just adjust your mindset from thinking about how can you get something from her to what can you offer her? How can you challenge her up to your level? So start thinking about it that way, and that will help a lot with your dating and approach anxiety. And then number two, add a third step to your breathing. This will physically calm you down. So before you go up and talk to her or before you go on your date or anytime you feel a little nervous, you can just add a third step to your breathing to calm down. So instead of just breathing in and then breathing out, breathe in, hold your breath and then breathe out. So you want to breathe in, hold your breath and breathe out for the same number of seconds or counts. So you can breathe in for five counts, hold your breath for five counts, and then exhale for five counts. And if you add this third step to your breathing, it physically calms you down and you're going to feel less nervous. So give that a try. And then number three, if you enjoy coffee, have one cup of black coffee before you go out. Because coffee has been shown to reduce social anxiety and make people feel more social. So this can really help you. And I would never advocate depending on a substance for things. However, if you're going on a first date, that's a little more nerve wracking than going on your third date. Once you've been out with a woman a couple of times, you're going to feel less nervous naturally. So if coffee can help you get through meeting her or get through your first date or two with her, do it. And this is something that really works for me when I go out. So give it a try. And then number four, make quick decisions and stick to them. If you're going out to a bar or a club, go inside for a second, look around to see where there's a good spot and then immediately walk there. Or before you even go in, have a plan that as soon as you get into the venue, you're going to go to the bar and order a drink. Then you're going to go to the restroom and then you're going to go to a table. And then if you're having a conversation with a woman or you're out on a date with her, pick where you're going to sit and stick to it. Or if you're at dinner, pick the first thing that looks good on the menu, close the menu and stick to it no matter what. Because worrying about these little decisions makes you feel more nervous. So just pick something and stick to it. And this is really cool because it's something that you can practice in your everyday life. The next time you go to a restaurant for lunch or dinner, try picking the first thing that sounds good, closing your menu and not changing your mind no matter what even if the server tells you about a really good special or someone else is ordering something that sounds good. Stick to your initial decision. That's going to help you feel more decisive. So this is something that you can practice every day. And when you're on a date with a woman and you order your food or you order your smoothie or coffee or whatever it is, and you just pick a table and you go there and you sit down with her, that's going to make you feel less anxious. Now, here's the thing about this. Let's say you meet a girl for a smoothie and you both have already ordered and now you're going to go sit down and you want to go to the back table on the left and after you order you start walking there and then she says hey can we sit over here then you can adjust your course however you always want to pick something and stick to it unless she has a better idea and that's going to make you feel less nervous so instead of trying to figure out where she wants to sit or asking her that Pick a place that feels good to you and just go for it. And then if she has a better idea, she'll let you know and you can adjust from there. And eliminating thinking too much about these little decisions will definitely help you feel less anxious. So give it a try. And then number five, call out your nervousness if you want, but only do it once and don't make a big deal out of it. So if you're on a date with a girl and you feel a little nervous, you can just say, hey, just so you know, I'm a little nervous right now, haha. <laughs> okay, so if you want to, being honest and just calling out the fact that you're nervous 
can reduce the tension in that situation. And if you do it, just don't focus on it too much. Bring it up one time, make light of it, and then move forward. And that can drastically reduce the amount of tension that you feel. And most of the time, it's not going to have a negative effect on your date at all, unless you dwell on it. So feel free to be honest and just call it out. But if you do it, only do it one time. Don't make it a heavy thing and don't focus on it. Just move forward. And then number six, do things that you legitimately enjoy on your own, whether she's with you or not, and then invite her to join you. So instead of trying to figure out what kind of date will impress her or what kind of date she'll enjoy, instead of doing that when you want to ask her out, pick something that you really love doing already and then invite her to join you. And yeah, you can think about if she would enjoy it too. Ideally, you want to choose something that you really love doing that she might also enjoy. So that's the ideal. But you will feel much less anxious and nervous if you're doing something that you already love in a venue that you feel comfortable with. And she's going to pick up on those feelings. So if you're genuinely enjoying yourself in this activity, she's going to feel that from you and she's going to have a better time on the date as well. And again, just like when you pick a table, if she has a better idea, she'll let you know. So if you choose an activity for a date that you really love and you ask her to join you, she might say, hey, that's not really my thing. How about we do this? And then in that case, you can go do that thing with her if you want. But I strongly recommend if you're going to ask a woman out on a date that you choose something that you feel comfortable with and that you enjoy whether she's with you or not. And that's going to make you feel a lot less nervous. It's also going to make you feel more confident if she happens to show up late or cancel on you last minute. You're not just going to be sitting there at a place that you hate, waiting for her and feeling bad about yourself. If you choose an activity that you genuinely enjoy, even if for some reason she doesn't show up, it's not going to eat into your confidence as much. So definitely pick something that you enjoy and invite her to join you. And then lastly, number seven, do things that allow you to face the same way as her instead of sitting directly across from her. So when you are facing your whole body towards her, like your head, your shoulders, your hips, and your feet are all pointed directly at her and her whole body is pointed directly back at you, that raises the tension between the two of you and can make both of you feel nervous if you do it too soon. So you want to open your body language a little bit and you want to kind of stand side by side with her or sit next to her so that you're shoulder to shoulder. And what does that do for you? Well, first of all, it makes everyone feel more comfortable. It makes you feel less nervous because the tension is lower. And it also implies that you already have rapport with her. Because when we walk with someone shoulder to shoulder, they're on our team. So instead of two enemies facing each other directly, like two boxers in a boxing ring, you want to be like two teammates walking somewhere and doing something together for the most part. Now you can increase the tension later and you can both face your body at each other 100% later because sometimes you want to build the tension. You don't want to just be in the friend zone, but when you first meet a woman or you first meet up with her on a date, you don't want to point your entire body at her at first. So do something on your date where you can both face the same way, like grabbing an ice cream and going for a walk or going for a hike. Or if you're having a conversation with her, sit next to her instead of across. My favorite thing to do is if there's a square table, sit at a 90 degree angle next to her instead of across. So the ideal thing for a first conversation or a first date is if you're sitting at a square table at a 90 degree angle because you're not sitting too close to her and you're also not pointing your whole body at her. And that's going to reduce the tension between the two of you, make everything less awkward, and you're going to feel more confident. And she's going to feel more comfortable, which means she'll be more attracted to you. And that's going to make you feel even more confident because we all feel more confident when we start to realize that this woman is attracted to us. And again, if you get through a couple of dates with a woman and you're going on your third date with her, you're probably going to feel a lot less anxious than you do on your first date with her. So just use these seven tips on your first couple of interactions with a woman until your nerves calm down naturally. And I guarantee you, you're going to be more successful. And then lastly, just remember that you don't need her approval. Okay. You need to approve of yourself. 
if you're living a life that you genuinely enjoy and you're being honest with yourself, if you live in integrity with yourself and you're happy with your decisions and you're living the way that you really want to live, then you don't need anyone else to approve of you. And that's going to cut your social anxiety down a lot. And remember, when you go into a party or a club or even when you go on a date, the other people are all thinking similar things to you. Everyone's just worried about how they're going to look, how they're being perceived. Your date is going to be worried about how you think about her too. So get out of your own head and just realize that people care a lot more about how they look and how they're doing than how you're doing. And that takes a lot of the pressure off. So when you want to meet a woman or you want to go on a date with her and you don't want to feel so anxious or nervous, just remember that she feels a little anxious and nervous too probably. And when you get out of your own head and you realize that other people feel that way too, you can make them feel more comfortable. And you're going to feel more comfortable because of that. So be a good man on your terms. Only you knows what that means for you. And if you're living in integrity with what you think is good and you're doing things that you really believe in, then you really truly don't need anyone else's approval. And that's when you have that really core level confidence that makes you feel less anxious all the time. So cut things that aren't serving you and that aren't good for you out of your life and add more things that make your life better. And then when you want to go introduce yourself to a woman or you want to go on a date, you're not going to feel as anxious because your life is already supporting you at the highest possible level. You're already enjoying yourself and you just want to see if maybe she might want to be a part of that instead of trying to get that from her. And now you have seven tools that you can use to deal with your dating and approach anxiety. And as a thank you for checking out this presentation, we have some free gifts for you. We have some advanced free training for you and you can get it by going to datingadviceformenwholovewomen.com. That's datingadviceformenwholovewomen.com or you can just click on one of the links in the description box below this video. So go grab your free gifts now and if you're really ambitious, go grab your copy of the best-selling Attract and Keep Her System right now. Inside the Attract and Keep Her System, you'll discover how to attract a devoted girlfriend or wife and how to keep her in love so you don't have to worry about getting dumped or divorced ever again. And you'll also learn how to build an awesome, fulfilling relationship with her that keeps both of you happy. So I encourage you to end your pain and confusion about women forever. Go grab your copy of Attract and Keep Her right now. Just go to attractandkeepher.com slash system. That's attractandkeeper.com slash system. I'm Jim Wolf with Dating Advice for Men Who Love Women, and I'll talk to you later. Cheers.